Hello everyone, in this video we'll look into tonometry IOP measurement. Now let's begin with the introduction. What is tonometry? Tonometry is a test that measures the pressure inside your eye which is called intraocular pressure IOP and the instrument used to measure IOP is called a tonometer. What is the unit of tonometry? Most tonometers are calibrated to measure pressure in millimeters of mercury MMHG. And the normal range of intraocular pressure will be given at the end of the video. So stay with us till the end. Why do we perform tonometry? Our eyes are filled with different fluids that keep them healthy. New fluid is constantly made and old fluid drains out. But if the drainage system gets plugged, the fluids build up which leads to the rise in pressure inside our eyes. Over time, high pressure inside our eye can damage optic nerve which sends images from eyes to brain. If it's left untreated, it can cause glaucoma. Now, let us discuss about the indication of tonometry. When do we perform tonometry? Your doctor may order a photonometry test if they suspect you may be at risk of glaucoma. According to the American Academy of Ophthalmology, you may be at risk of glaucoma if you are over 40 years of age, have a family history of glaucoma, are nearsighted or farsighted, have other chronic eye conditions, have injured your eye in the past, have diabetes, have high blood pressure, have poor blood circulation, have used corticosteroid medication for prolonged periods of time. Your doctor might also test your intraocular pressure if you are experiencing symptoms such as gradual loss of peripheral vision, severe eye pain, blurred vision, halos around lights, and reddening of your eyes. Contraindication of tonometry Corneal defects, abraded cornea, may cause further injury. Patient with recurrent corneal erosion, patient with active infection, patients who cannot maintain a relaxed position and suspected penetrating injury. Normal range of intraocular pressure. As I have already mentioned in the beginning of this video, according to the American Academy of Ophthalmology, the normal eye pressure is usually considered to be between 10 to 22 mmHg. Types of tonometry. As shown in this slide, tonometry is basically divided into two, direct and indirect. Indirect is further divided into three parts, applanation, indentation, and palpation tonometry. And applanation tonometry is divided into contact and non-contact tonometry. Direct versus indirect tonometry. Direct tonometry. A needle is inserted in the eye to measure the IOP due to which it gives more accurate result as compared to indirect tonometry. Practically, it is not feasible as needle needs to be inserted in the eye which may lead to other ocular pathologies. Manometry is the only method of direct tonometry. Indirect tonometry. It is based on eye's response to an applied force. It is a widely used method as there is no need for any insertion of needle, easy to use and no risk of spreading infections. Indirect tonometry can be of three types, applanation, indentation and palpation. Applanation tonometry. Applination tonometry is used to measure force necessary to flatten a small standard area of cornea. There are two types on the basis of variable that is measured. Variable force. Area of cornea on application held constant force varies. Example, Goldman tonometer. Variable area. Force applied to cornea held constant area varies. Example, Maglakov tonometer. Indentation tonometry. 
Indentation tonometer is used to measure the amount of deformation or indentation of the globe in response to a standard weight applied to the cornea or the area flattened by a standard force. It displaces large intraocular volume, so conversion table based on empirical data is used to estimate IOP. Most commonly used weights are 5.5 gram, 7.5 gram and 10 gram. Example, Shewell's tonometer. Palpation tonometry. Intraocular pressure is estimated by response of eye to pressure applied by index finger pulp. The accuracy is less but useful if any other tonometer is not available in a limited setup. With the index finger of one hand, pressure is applied and with index finger of the other hand, hardness of the eyeball is felt. It is totally based on examiner's clinical experience. Contact tonometry. During this procedure, globe is touched by the tonometer. Thus, it is called contact tonometry. IOP measurement is performed by deforming the globe and correlating the force responsible for deformation to the pressure within the eye. Example, Goldman Applination Tonometer, Shoes Tonometer. Being contact method, extra care needs to be taken for cleaning the instrument after examining each patient. Non-contact tonometry. Non-contact tonometry does not touch the eye but uses a puff of air to flatten your cornea. It is often used as a simple way to Applination tonometer Applination tonometer are used to measure force necessary to flatten a small standard area of cornea. It is considered as gold standard of IOP measurement due to its accuracy and also it is used widely. It is introduced by Goldman in 1954, hence it is called Goldman Applination Tonometer. Principle Goldman Applination Tonometer is based on input fix law. It states that the pressure inside a sphere is equal to the force required to flatten its surface divided by the area of flattening that is P equals F by A but the ideal sphere is dry thin-walled and flexible cornea is not an ideal sphere two extra forces acting on cornea are capillary attraction of tear meniscus and corneal rigidity with this formula it is determined that if the area of applination is 7.35 mm, then these two forces cancel each other. But in Goldman Applination Tonometer, area of applination is only 3.06 mm. Thus, modified Imbert Fix law, that is, P equals F by A becomes P equals F plus T minus C by A. Parts of Goldman Applination Tonometer, which consists of by prism, feeder arm, housing, adjusting knob, and this is to connect with the slit lamp. Procedure of Goldman Applination Tonometer Prerequisites Patient is asked not to drink alcohol based beverage or large amount of fluid within two hours as these can alter the normal intraocular pressure. Room illumination should be dim light condition. Surface anesthetic drop that is 0.5% pro barricane. Fluorescent strip, cleaned gat tip, tension knob at 1 and not at 0. Slate lamp setup, cobalt blue illumination and angle between illumination and microscope approximately 60 degree. Instill the local anesthesia drop and fluorescent. Patient is made to sit in front of the slit lamp and the cornea and by prism are illuminated with the cobalt blue light from slit lamp.
ask the patient to look straight ahead, open both eyes wide and keep perfectly still. Move the tonometer forward until the two fluorescent semicircles in prism head are seen. The correct endpoint is when inner edge of the two fluorescent semicircles images just touch. Reading obtained in grams is multiplied by 10 to give IOP in millimeter of mercury. At least three readings should be taken and its variation should not be more than 1 mmHg. Interpretation Gap between the outer edge of both Myers because the pressure applied by GAT is less than the eye and its correction is to increase GAT pressure by moving the knob clockwise. Gap between inner border of both Myers if the pressure applied by GAT is more than the eye and it is corrected by decreasing GAT pressure by moving the knob anticlockwise. Fluorescent rings are too wide. That is because the measuring elements were not dried after cleaning or eyelids come into contact with the measuring elements. The correction is to withdraw the slit lamp and dry the measuring elements with the cotton saw. Fluorescent rings are too thin. That is because the tear fluid is dried during the longer measuring time period. Its correction is to let the patient blink once or twice, then repeat the measuring procedure. Different size of Myers displaced up or down is because the position of slit lamp is higher or lower than the patient's eye and its correction is to level the slit lamp until both fluorescent strips are of equal size. Source of error Falsely low IOP when the fluorescent is too little, thin cornea, corneal edema, and four diopter off with the rule astigmatism will lead to decrease in IOP of 1 mm Hg. Falsely high IOP When there is too much fluorescent, thick cornea, steep cornea, and 4 diopter off against the rule astigmatism will lead to increase in IOP of 1 mmHg. 3 diopter increase in corneal curvature leads to increase in 1 mmHg of IOP. GAD gives accurate readings when central corneal thickness is around 550 micron. We need to add 0.7 mm Hg for each 10 micron increased central corneal thickness and vice versa. Thank you and stay tuned with Smart Optometry for more videos.